Welcome to the Gun Cranks Audio Podcast, the audio-only version of the Gun Cranks YouTube channel. The Gun Cranks are one of the internet's most unique gun talk shows, and it's anybody's guess where the discussion will go each week. Each episode is packed full of information and gun fun as they discuss and maybe even cuss their way through the topic at hand. The Gun Cranks are brought to you by FMG Publications, the publisher of American Handgunner and Guns Magazines, along with AmericanCop.com. If you'd like to see the Gun Cranks face-to-face, -face, head over to our YouTube channel of the same name. But if not, get ready for another great episode of The Gun Cranks. Good evening. Yes, it's Wednesday again. It's 8 p.m. and we are at the Gun Cranks. I'm Guns <laughs> Magazine editor Brent Wheat along with Tom McHale, who's the editor of American Handgunner, and the venerable and scholarly Roy <laughs> Huntington. Hello, gentlemen. I was going to say high mileage. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I've been venerable or called worse words than that, though. Yeah. Ah, very good. Well, you know, we really focus on having fun doing this, but I'm going to throw the floor to Roy. You've got uh, uh, unique guns behind you. It's not uh, your normal picture behind you. Why don't you explain that just real quick to the folks? Well, I appreciate uh, uh, Brent. We're, I had a dear friend, Terry Tussie of Tussie Custom, and he's in actually our last issue of American Handgunner Magazine. Uh, these are sort of retro guns that he built. I will see if you could see them. There we go. They they look like pretty minty 1911s kind of military guns, and but they're not. They're actually current production guns. But uh, Terry passed away from pneumonia. Uh, he was a longtime fight with being wheelchair bound from an injury he got some 15 years ago. But he was a tough bird, and like the doctor said, Terry, everybody else would have been dead in eight years. It took you know took Terry 15 years. So uh, he passed away. I'll be mentioning a little something about it in my next insider column and stuff. And so. Hats off to Terry. Yeah, it was a pretty good run, and we'll miss him. Yeah, definitely. So, thank you. Well, let's get back on to the, the little more light stuff. I think today will be a fun one. We're going to talk about the top five gun myths as chosen by our cast of characters here. And we're going to talk about the misconceptions of firearms. Some of them held by avid shooters. Some of them held by folks that have never even touched a gun. Unfortunately, that includes a lot of our incoming administration. So, Leaving that where it is. So, guys, well, not counting shotguns. Not Joe's, counting shotguns. Joe's up there you on shotguns. The, the so. knee. And you've seen yeah. that target, the uh, Joe Biden qualification target. It's just the no, no. lower torso with the nine ring being the kneecap. So, <laughs> so. That's okay. great. So, I'll our first gun myth that. we're going to talk yeah. about is nobody needs an assault rifle. And I'm not talking about the Bidens and the Beto O'Rourke's of the world. This, this is a personal peeve of mine. It's the great FUD versus everybody else and if you're not familiar with that a fud is in reference to elmer fud meaning a guy that just hunts and i've we've all heard this a lot well i just hunt you know deer and i got a shotgun nobody needs those black rifles well guys where where do we start on this i uh, well, we the media <laughs> yeah Hat, hats off to the media because they have done a masterful job of making everyone in the planet think that a black rifle is a machine gun mm -hmm. i mean i hate it but wow they have convinced and continue to convince everyone that that's the case amazing it's a bit of that if it bleeds it leads kind of a thing yeah. just you hear you hear the word machine gun i like it when there's like a report of a knife a stabbing, but they run a, a picture of a gun behind the yeah. reporter, <laughs> you know, he wanted to have a gun, right. Yeah. When he stabbed I, I think, the other guy. Well, you know, I think we have to look at our own industry though, and, and accept a part of that guilt though, because we had a very famous gun writer, TV starry outdoor huntery kind of guy some years ago who basically said that very thing was, he said, you know, Oh, we don't need those AR 15 guns are stupid. And bull cue the crickets you know his yeah. tv show got dropped dropped from all the gun magazines he wrote for it took him about five or six hard years to come back eating crow the entire way 
And uh, still to this day, because uh, I mentioned that writer on a show not too long ago, and our own Dave Workman is a good friend of his, and and you know he carries the banner for him. But you know, even he admits, man, he uh, he really his friend screwed his career up pretty badly, and uh, you know. But I think that that highlights where he was just flat wrong. You know, the uh, especially now when in our new age of this incoming administration. On the Second Amendment, we've all got to be on this together, because if you think they're just going after black rifles, you're insane. They want your gun and and they want your deer shotgun and they want your lever action and et cetera, et cetera. So we got to be in this together. I think the way it's all very intentional. Yeah, it's the whole if it fires more than one shot, it's it's in the it's in the category, you know. And I think eventually if it fires one shot, it'll be in the category. Yeah. I think let's give them a tool though, or our, our shooters a tool. If you don't like to shoot AR 15s, if you don't even like AR 15s or black rifles, that's fine. But all you need to say is, well, you know, I prefer shotguns and I enjoy single shot muzzle loading, you know, revolver or muzzle loading rifles. And uh, I don't really have any need for the uh, black rifles. I can see where that could be interesting for people though. That's all. There you go. Your opinions out there, but it, but it, otherwise, because how would they feel if somebody mm-hmm. said muzzle loaders are stupid and <laughs> yeah. we don't need them, we should ban them all? <laughs> it's like well, yeah, we continue to eat our young, don't we? Exactly. Yeah, we eat. I mean, we're so busy analogy. fighting with each other in the gun community that uh, we're getting our butt kicked yep. far too yep. often. No. So don't be a tool of the mainstream <laughs> media. That's all we got to (laughs) say. So let's go to number two. And I I love this one. Suppressors are just for criminals. Well, yeah. Uh, Isn't that that the truth? Everybody knows that, right? And if you've never shot a suppressor, first of all, they're not like Hollywood. They do make a little bit of noise, but they're for hearing protection and to keep the complaints down from the neighbors, the you know, anti-gun neighbors about, I hear gunfire. It solves that problem. And there was a great line in our recent Guns Magazine, um, and I think it was Wayne Van Zaal, I think, who pointed out he was hunting in Scotland and they had suppressed rifles. And he mentioned, well, that's kind of a hot topic in, in America. And he goes, don't you Yanks have mufflers on your cars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was Dave Anderson. I oh, that's who mean. it was. That's who yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, he I was, want to he, drop he, a truth bomb. <laughs> If you ever if you ever get into an argument about suppressors or you have the opportunity and people say, oh, it just hides it, allows more crime and this and that. Here's a truth bomb. You don't have to remember decibels and logarithmic sound scales and all that stuff. Remember this one thing. A suppressed gun of any kind is louder than a jackhammer. Hmm. A jackhammer clocks in at about one hundred and fifteen decibels, as does a Van Halen cons. Well. I guess I should pick a different band now, to be. But, uh, <laughs> but as does a, a loud Megadeth concert and uh, not even close. So yeah. if you think a jackhammer going off next to you is quiet, then that is true. Suppressors are silent. So yep. it's, it's that whole divide and conquer thing. Suppressors make it easier to shoot in proximity to people and protects your hearing. So people that are sensitive to recoil and muzzle blast, you know, it helps them shoot. So, I think the anti-gunners realize not a lot of people use them. So if they make them, you know, off limits, a nasty, terrible thing that criminals are going to use, then it'll be pretty easy to get legislation to make them just go away, especially in the current administration. And it's, there's nothing further from the truth. It's they're doing what they are doing with black rifles, which is just spinning it. And they're dividing more of our, you know, mm-hmm. like Tom said, we're eating our own, we're fighting and we should embrace all of this together. Yep. Well, and thank you. Thank you. TVs and movies, you know, because all the way back to the 30s and 40s, when somebody would pull a a little pen sized suppressor out of his pocket and screw it onto his revolver and it would go thump, thump. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he would always be a criminal, a bad criminal. Yeah. And so. You know, that's so everyone, the non-shooting public just think, oh, no, those are all used by criminals. I, you know, what would be interesting? I remember I did this one time, but I don't, I don't really recall the data, although it was infinitesimal, which is a big word for me to use. But the actual 
documented usages of a suppressor in any kind of crime, it's virtually non-existent, yeah. you know? And I think people forget that it also makes your body, makes your gun bigger. If you put a suppressor <laughs> on a handgun, it's like yeah. you've, you've got this, you know, baseball bat now that you're trying to put in your pocket. Yeah. It's a so, concealment challenge. I mean, it's a concealment a challenge. millimeter suppressor is still that long. So, yeah, so you double the size of a handgun. Going off screen here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't fall for the suppressor nonsense. They're just good fun and they protect your hearing, but they do tie into point number three, which is, this is my favorite on the entire list. Guns make people fly backwards when they get shot. That's you what know? I say. Yep. We've, well, we've all seen it through the saloon window, through the bar, through the back yeah. wall of the building, across the canyon and the guy is standing there going hey, yeah i got i got the black bart didn't i yeah. <laughs> tom and you're the, you're the physics Harry. guy yeah. explain this okay let's go non-physics for a second <laughs> okay why do we pass this stuff around and i mean any of it like all of these gun counter myths are so easy to prove or disprove go try it <laughs> right. I mean, take something outside, take a, a steel plate. Ever shot a plate rack? Those weigh about three pounds each for a six inch plate. And as we all know, if you hit it just right, it'll fall over, but not every time. Three pounds. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Take people. something to the range and shoot at it and see what happens, you know? We actually, it's funny, that brings up a, a fun story. We were disproving this myth for the 400 millionth time. And um, I went out and I bought a 25 pound bag of sand and I put, I had an old, an old uh, bullet resistant vest and I stuck it on the bag of sand so we could quote unquote, capture all of the energy of the bullet. Right. So I wouldn't just pass through. And um, so we're shooting this sandbag with everything under the sun from 22 to nine to 40, 45 AR uh, that, that, we kind of had some containment problems with that one with the vest. <laughs> I was going to say, but, but finally to even barely tip the 25 pound bag of sand, it took a 12 gauge slug moving at 1600 feet per second. And it, and it, it was like, it was like one of those slow motion movies, like, ee <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't exactly fly through the uh, plate glass window. No well, you know, we talked about this once before, and I remember I explained the doctor who explained that reaction that we get, you know, of, of people. And you do see some movies like that or, you know, where video of somebody getting shot and they go, you know, and they fall back. Uh, although most people I've seen a couple people get shot and we've all seen videos and stuff. It, it's like you pull their plug and they suddenly have no bones in their body. They just crumple straight down. Well, he said, what happens if you get stuck in the butt with a pin? And he said, you go, whoa, you know, and you jump, <laughs> and you, you know, and he said, that's what's happening. A lot of times when somebody gets shot, he said, it's just like you stuck them with a pin and they're reacting to that pain it's yeah. not the bullet knocking them down on yeah. the ground or something and so that is just such a great analogy and so just remember that so just uh, <laughs> you know roy we've talked about this both of us have seen people shot on numerous occasions being retired police officers and you're right they either crumple and sometimes to a completely survivable wound it's i've been shot i need to collapse now so there's psychology involved but really, when you agree, what normally happens is they run, even if they are dead on their feet, they run. So they you generally, run. you know, find them 100 yards down down the street or whatever. So uh, I, I've yet to see anybody go through a saloon window that they didn't launch there themselves. Well, you know, and there was we had one where uh, cops shot this guy with a nine millimeter two or three times. And it, it was on video because there was a, a camera crew there riding along or something. And it was like, pow, pow, pow. And this guy drops his gun and he goes, hey, man, stop shooting me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I mean, you know, nobody fell down. Nobody ran away. No, I mean, he just sat down and yeah. he just like he was going, man, why'd you shoot me? And stop. I know. Stop shooting me. Yeah. Well, the cop said, well. Yeah. Well, I can't say what the cops said. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, but that wasn't a 45, though, right? Yeah. If it had been a 45, he would have right. knocked I mean, back. Well, clearly, I mean, we got to preface this car. whole discussion yeah. does not apply with a 45. <laughs> that is like the ultimate man ball. stopper. 45 hardball. Yeah. And, and you know, this this raises a good point of uh, anything you see in TV. 
it's very simple. Stop and think, why did they do that? Why did they do things like put a gun up next to their face? You know, with uh, sometimes with their finger on the trigger. Why do they it's the high people? Sabrina? Don't forget. That's yeah, what they call the that. full yeah. Sabrina. Sabrina. <laughs> or they oh, make, that never gets old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or they send people flying through the window. Or my other favorite is when, you know, the guy is shooting like a 38 snubby and it's got a muzzle blast that goes out like 18 feet. Why do they do that? It's very simple. It's dramatic. And what is TV? It is a quote unquote drama. It's, TV. it's so, TV. Yeah. you know, an actual gun. You're fight, saying they embellish. They embellish just. A it's bit. hard to believe. I realize that. Tom. Yeah. It's okay. hard to believe. Yeah. It's good to know. I see. I learned something today. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at videos of actual gunfights on the street, and there are plenty of those on YouTube, they're very dramatic to the people downrange and firing, but to the bystanders, they're not that spectacular. So Hollywood and television has to ramp them up. So, and they're over fast. Yeah, pop, 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 pop. Okay, we're done. You know, yeah. And I was watching all the Western bison. the other day, and it was. Uh, I don't know how. But first of all, they had the uh, twelve shot uh, single action army, and this gunfight must have gone on for seventeen minutes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. somebody put us everybody out of their misery. Come on, people! And they and, and they go like that when they shoot. They oh go, yeah. Pew! Well, you get you get extra velocity. Yeah. Well, the gunfight at the OK Corral, the world's most famous gunfight, okay, of all time, had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine participants. They shot thirty-one total rounds, and it went for twenty-seven seconds, which was a really long gunfight, you know. Yeah. Uh, but there you go, twenty-seven seconds and an eternity of history. Okay. How many plate glass windows in Tombstone were destroyed? And if you watch the movie, you'll see him fly back from getting hit with the shot. That's what I mean. No, like okay. that. Yeah. Lots. So <laughs> yeah. TV movies. It's not real. Sorry. So we'll, we'll go on. And this is this is kind of a TV thing, too. But I also hear this at gun counters a lot. And especially with shooters that should know better is you can't. This is number four. You can't miss with a shotgun. And if you've ever I done can. any patterning, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can too. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. We've all missed it. But what I'm talking about is people say in a home defense situation, you know, I just get a shotgun and I just point it, and you know, the bad guy magically evaporates. And if you've done any patterning on almost any shotgun, other than maybe a real short barrel one, you're only talking a fist size pattern, maybe, maybe a plate size pattern across the room, but that would be exceptional. Mostly you're getting those kind of patterns with a shotgun across the room of any. So we did a video on patterning. That. Yeah. You mean like, actually, does that actually, mean like going to the range and trying testing? it yourself rather than passing on the myth? <laughs> well you don't even have to do that because we did the video we have a video on our our youtube channel uh, in the insider tips and it's what is it? it's birdshot versus buckshot mm -hmm. and so yeah. just look what and there it is right there you like i think we shot it like at seven yards or something and it's got that fist size rat hole wound from the shot you know just blowing out the center of the target and Yep. Yeah. Hey, I've got a, a surprising story. We uh, Beretta had a, a writer's event uh, some years ago and it was a, it was a, a tactical event up at Academy, the old Blackwater place. And so, yeah, it was a bunch of us, you know, know nothing yahoos at a serious training place. But, but besides that, we were, we were messing around with smoothbore shotguns. It was their, their 1301 tactical shotgun, no chokes, no nothing. And um, we were shooting federal flight control wad. 12 gauge buckshot, you know, I don't remember if it was an eight or nine pellet load, but um, um, we started out three yards and we backed up and backed up and backed up just to see what the pattern was. We got to 75 yards, seven, five, almost a hundred. And the all pellets, most shots were still on a silhouette target. Wow. A standard silhouette target, 75 yards. So tell me you don't need to aim that. Exactly. You're right. They developed that for SWAT teams and yeah. uh, to use buckshot basically as a close range sniper rifle that put, pretty much <laughs> puts a period on whatever it is you're shooting at. You know, that's no, kind I of agree an oxymoron there, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. But you're yeah. right. And, and people think that with a shotgun, that, that that's how it is. You don't have to aim. That's the other one. 
you know, it's, Oh no, you don't have to aim. You just hold it down there. We've shot really short barreled. Uh, what do they call those? And uh, NSF shot NS NFA. illegal shotgun, NFA shotguns. Yeah. That had like 10 inch barrels and, and eight inch barrels and 12 inch barrels, little short pump guns. And, uh, and they were actually still same thing, Brent. They had exactly. at five or seven yards, they were still just full fist size groups. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I, no I was joke, the last no guy anything. on my department when we went to patrol rifles, because I'm old enough to know, you know, when we went from shotguns to patrol rifles, I held on to my, uh, I think it was a 10 inch H70 because it was such a wonderful weapon operating in the confines of like a trailer or something like that. And my point was I can put an ounce of buckshot you know, across the room and still, you know, put a hole like that versus the patrol rifle. And I'm not against patrol rifles and I'm not bringing up that whole, you know, so you, you don't like black rifles. I love black rifles. I like you have an all issue rifles. with black with assault rifles, black rifles, or assault weapons. Yeah. Whatever, it's the wrong word. Assault weapon is the wrong word, right? Yeah, whatever. So anyway, my point being, uh, I, you know, the same thing though, across the room, even with a 10 inch barrel and without flight control wads, you're still going to put it into a, a little bitty hole. So aiming is important. Which brings up the high cap magazine part of this uh, equation too. True. So, oh, I've got an AR-15. I have 20 rounds. I can't miss. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. Yep. You know, I've, I was at, uh, at a writer's event one time and there was a hundred yard steel plate that you had to take out with a AR-15. And that was part of this little competition we were doing and so i ran up and and you know sat down with the rifle and rested it and aimed and took a shot and hit the plate right so i was done dropped the rifle ran on the next thing. meanwhile the person at the other thing he lay down and he started going bang 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 he was just like opened up on it right yeah and missed it clean 20 round magazine absolutely missed it i remember the spotters were watching and they went you haven't hit it yet <laughs> you know, meanwhile, I'm done with whatever I was, you know. Doing. Well, so it raises the point too that the bad guy's name is on the front of that bullet and your name's on the back. So mm -hmm. you drop, you know, 20 rounds at a bad guy and you only hit him once. Where where are the rest of those rounds going? With my luck, it's usually into a busload of hemophiliac nuns and orphans. <laughs> it's um, true. It just it's not good. Yeah. You gotta aim. So Roy, funny. I, I love that deadpan from the, the, the safety officer following you around on a, on a stage of fire like that. Well, nope. They haven't hit it yet. Nope, haven't hit it yet. These guys are just, they both, I remember they, they lowered their monocular. They looked, they said, you haven't hit it yet. You know, Keep going. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to get into number five now, and this is one that we'll try to have some fun with it, but it, it just boils my, my shorts. That's a weird analogy, but, and it's really being perpetrated by the mainstream media now, because of course we all know old white guys are, are the devil, but they're, they're going after firearms by saying gun owners are all old white guys and we're ist and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we don't want you on the range. We don't want minorities or women or young people to own guns. You know, we're just, it's an exclusive club for old white guys. And that's what gun owners are. And yes, a lot of older white males own guns, but I would hope that we all know it's true. That's that it's not true. And we need to all be ambassadors. I don't care if you're 92 years old, if you're a white guy, you know, reach out to people and, and welcome folks because in teaching, I found so many folks that maybe didn't fit the gun owner mold and you get them in a class and they suddenly discover, Hey, these guys are all right. Gun gun people are cool people. What, regardless of color, age, sex, whatever. So I'll get off my soapbox. Period though. But you're right. I have never been refused help or a welcome at, at a range that I've been on, you know, it ever, I, you know, uh, this uh, the day before yesterday, we had a young millennial woman and her husband here, first time deer hunter. And uh, we made her welcome, we got her set up, helped her stock, helped her get a first doe. It wow. absolutely was. She was so excited. And uh, and she said similar things. You know, it was just like this is really fun. And everybody, you guys were all so nice. I can't thank you enough. It's like, well, that's how it is, you know? Yeah. 
Oh, and actually, you know, with the what, what did we just get four million new shooters or six million new shooters in the last lot. year. Well, according to the stats, I mean, right off the top, what it's like 35 percent are women. And then there's a huge number of minorities and and people of color and whatnot. So we have this huge influx in our community. And I have not heard a single person on our side of the fence going, oh, heck, <laughs> everyone's been going cool. Welcome to the club or six million. Yeah. CNN said seven. Oh, oh well, see. seven and people. So oh, seven, seven people. <laughs> There's seven yeah. new gun owners yeah. this year. <laughs> so, okay. So it's probably more than that is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, Seven or eight or nine. Yeah. Hey, but seriously, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Um, at the, I go to a, a range quite frequently uh, just for quick and dirty stuff. It's uh, it's run by the, the state DNR. So it's a really nice outdoor facility. It The number of women there every time I go um, has exploded this year. I mean, so many more than before. Um, big changes going on. Yep. And and I will say, too, we've all seen the crusty old guy, whether he's white or not, but crusty old white guy at the range who isn't welcoming, who's – and it's not even a matter of age or skin color or gender. It's just he's a crusty old guy. And <laughs> we've all seen it, right? Don't be that guy. It could be at the gas station. Exactly. Yeah, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Right now we are under a microscope. <laughs> And whatever you do to not help shooting sports and the second amendment is going to be magnified 10,000 times. So don't be that guy, gal. That's that's the get off my lawn guy, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, okay. I know him. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stop on that. That's funny. Was there any other myths that we need to debunk now Uh, before we wrap things up? There's, there's so many we could make this show go for days probably oh i got one quick one ready Uh-oh. when you shoot a rifle the bullet goes perfectly flat right all the way out to however no. far it goes it rises yeah, yeah. It, or it rises yeah that's another one people say oh it leaves the muzzle and then it rises yeah. and then goes back down no it doesn't the MythBuster did a really good one where they uh it was they set up this little, um, you know, jig thing to where, so they dropped the bullet at the same time they fired their grand horizontally across the desert and were able to recover the fired round. And yes, both bullets hit the ground at exactly the same time, <laughs> which exactly. boggles people's minds. But so Wait. no, your yeah, your physics. bullet doesn't I think rise. Wayne Newton taught us that, right? <laughs> it's you know, <laughs> physics. <laughs> well, you know, the corollary, and I've told the story before, I argued with a guy uh, who should know better, and he was trying to explain to me how the, the velocity reaches its peak like at 10 feet from the muzzle. It's like, how, how does that work unless it is a rocket-propelled bullet? <laughs> but he got all wrapped around the axle because the uh, line of sight and the bullet path – does tend to arc in most scope sighted or well, any rifle for that matter, but it's not because the bullets doing that. It's because the way you set up the scope and the two lines intersected, yada, yada, yada. But he somehow in his head was just convinced and w- probably to this day, he will not accept the fact that it's faster 10 feet out from the muzzle than at the muzzle. It's like, read a physics That's an easy book, one man. to disprove. Go try it. Right. Yeah. Set your chronograph up. Brony. <laughs> you might want a blast shield. <laughs> I have one of those lab radars, Doppler radar Ooh. things, you know, yeah. that gives yeah. you the velocity as it shoots down. So I promise you in a Roy backyard video, I'll, I will actually do that. You know, we'll, we'll actually idea. track the velocity as it, as it goes down. So I think that'd be pretty interesting. So we can find the peak velocity. How many ever feet out from the muzzle it is. And I'm going to lie and say it's 10 feet out. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Ain't nothing Lenny, like any... starting a new myth, right? Yeah. That's right. Hey, we could be the gun myth busters. <laughs> no, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> that's been done. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of work to me. It so. does. It, sounds like it does. Yeah. Well, guys, any uh, final relevant thoughts as we no. finish our top five gun myths? Nothing I say is relevant usually, so it's not. <laughs> oh. Well, we appreciate everybody Before joining you us. Pass it on. Go test it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Go try it yourself. It's a usually pretty easy thing. Mm-hmm. Test it yourself. Don't fall prey to the myths being perpetrated by our friends, quote unquote, in the mainstream media, and be a good example of gun owners and Second Amendment advocates. And every one of us have to do that now. 
So make sure you also, you check us out on our social media platforms. You check out gunsmagazine.com and AmericanHandgunner.com. And uh, Tom, real quick, we hadn't talked about this, but I'm kind of throwing it to you. We're exploring alternative social media because we are. It sounds subversive, doesn't it? Yeah. So I I know Rumble, we've got uh, uh, videos going up there. We're working on uh, MeWe and what's the other one? Parlor. And um, yeah. I don't think we have our company up yet on Parlor, yeah. but we've individually. If you, if you don't want to be uh, subject, a subject of shadow banning and censorship and all that stuff, you can find us on MeWe. You can find us on Rumble.com. All our Gun Cranks videos are going to go there too. And yep. uh, find us on Parlor, P A R L E R. Exactly. And we've been sounding this alarm for a couple of months now and it's happening. Um, mm-hmm. we're not, the, the guys, maybe that ought to be our next show. We actually give some examples of what's going on, but there's going to be a concerted effort to silence all of us and the entire industry. It's happening. We can show it. So one way to combat that is by subscribing to guns magazine and American and as of yet, they've not tried to ban mailboxes. So or email. Well, email. actually, some companies are banning email, but not ours. So. Exactly. So You're anyway, get our emails. Subscribe. we uh, that we're sounding the alarm. Make sure you follow us and share us, and just let the or- corporate overlords know that you're a proud gun owner and you're not going to take this anymore. So anyway, guys have a great night. We've had fun here and reach out to us editor at American handgunner.com and gunsmagazine.com. Let us know what you want to hear, what you feel like, what you don't feel like, and we will address that in future shows. So on behalf of Tom McHale and Roy Huntington, I'm Brent wheat. Hope you guys have a great night. Get out there and get shit. Thanks for listening to the Gun Cranks Audio Podcast. If you'd like to see the video from today's episode, check out our YouTube channel of the same name. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the Guns Magazine Podcast and check out our other great publications, AmericanHandgunner.com, GunsMagazine.com, and AmericanCop.com.